So my name is Corey. I'm going to be presenting on my honours project that I did last year. This project was from March to about mid-November, so it was a, a very quick project, um, very challenging project. So today I'm going to talk uh, more about the, the methods we used, some of those challenges we encountered, and uh, where we're heading to this year. Uh, this project was supervised by Dr. Rowena Lobo, Gemma Crawford and Associate Professor Alison Reid. To begin with, I'd like to acknowledge the Wajak Noongar people as the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to them and their culture and to Elders past, present and future. So in, in the last decade, we've seen an increase of HIV transmission among those reporting heterosexual contact by 25%. This has been most noticeable among people born in high HIV prevalence countries, particularly those born in countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia regions. These two regions have the highest rates of HIV notifications. Over half of the notifications are late or advanced diagnosis, increase, increasing the likelihood of subsequent morbidity and mortality, healthcare costs and the risk for onward HIV transmission. Uh, so migrants are considered a priority population for Australia's HIV response and are uh, noted in Australia's seventh national HIV strategy, the WA HIV strategy, and uh, the HIV and mobility in Australia, the roadmap for action, which is hopefully a, a discussion paper you've all seen. If not, you can download it off the new SIREN website. So the HIV and mobility paper called for a more coordinated uh, approach to working with migrant communities. And this included improving data on primary health care service usage, sexual health attitudes and HIV knowledge. So we know that there are complex issues that affect HIV prevention among migrants. Uh, differences in HIV knowledge, such as uh, modes of transmission and knowledge about prevention, uh, increase individuals' risks and reduce HIV testing. Differences in cultural beliefs and norms, for example, the acceptance of uh, sexual partners outside marriage. Uh, negative attitudes towards condom use and uh, for some the association of condom use with immoral behaviour. HIV related stigma uh, and HIV being considered the, the fault of the individual. And difficulty in navigating health systems and poor knowledge of health eligibility. So it's important to note that migrants are not a homogenous group and that there are a large number of differences between these groups and individuals. This makes responding to the issue challenging and stresses the need for tailored prevention. So despite being a priority group, there's currently no regular uh, surveillance data for this group. Uh, to have this, we would need, uh, to begin with, a reliable questionnaire tool and appropriate methods of recruitment. Sorry, I need my water, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> So involving uh, communities in research can be challenging uh, due to sexual health and HIV being considered a sensitive or stigmatised issue. A lack of trust and fear of confidentiality, especially for people who come from countries where uh, their privacy has been breached. And concerns of being blamed for HIV or certain uh, communities being showcased in the media. Uh, to date, uh, the Kirby Institute over in New South Wales has conducted two uh, surveys with migrant communities on HIV knowledge and use of health services. So in 2006, a cross-sectional survey of Thai, Cambodian, Sudanese and Ethiopian communities um, were participated in a paper-based survey where they were intercepted at community events. This was again conducted in 2012 and also involved South African and Ethiopian communities. It's important to note with these two surveys, uh, a large number were actually Australian born and migrants who had lived in Australia for some time. The questionnaire was developed in house and not tested for reliability. It was a paper based survey uh, on the assumption that people lacked the, the computer literacy skills and it meant that the data had to be manually entered. It was conducted at community events, so it only involved uh, participants who were well connected to community and it was assisted uh, by organisations who worked with these communities. So for my project, we had three aims. Firstly, to adapt the two uh, questionnaires from Kirby on uh, HIV knowledge, risk behaviour and use of health services to be relevant for use here in WA. And this involved refining the survey with input from a project advisory group and testing the reliability of the survey through test-retest. 
Uh, the second uh, aim was to explore appropriate methods of recruitment with uh, communities. Uh, this included recruiting participants through, or attempting to, uh, through both face-to-face -face intersets and online, and testing for the differences in demographics by method of recruitment. And lastly, exploring knowledge of HIV, risk behaviour and recent use of health services among these groups uh, and testing for differences by region of birth. So our target group were adults aged 18 years and over, are those who were born in the Sub-Saharan Africa or Southeast Asia um, region, who were recent arrivals. This was originally decided as being two years. Uh, difficulties in recruitment meant that we extended this to 10 years halfway through. Uh, and they also had to be English speaking due to the, the time limits of this project and the nothing budget. <laughs> <laughs> So at the start of this project, we put together a project advisory group, uh, and this group was designed to provide input into the questionnaire, particularly around the, the, the questions asked, the use of language, the incentives we used, and uh, the, our recruitment process. And you can see the list of organisations there. We had a face-to-face -face meeting in May around uh, refining the questionnaire, and most of the feedback was around shortening the survey length and simplifying the language that was used. And then the advisory group assisted us through the recruitment process. So the questionnaire was a consolidation of the two past New South Wales surveys. Uh, we added an additional question around visa status. It had 50 questions in total and took approximately 15 minutes to complete. And it was disseminated as the adult health survey, so it didn't have an, actually anything about sexual health or HIV in the title. Uh, it had seven sections, demographics, HIV knowledge, perception of HIV, sexual behaviour, access to health services, HIV testing, and travel to a, a high HIV prevalence country. So the recruitment on the right there, you can see our little flyer. Uh, we proposed to conduct intercept surveys at community events and proposed to circulate the um, survey online through organisational networks and community group networks. Uh, challenges in accessing uh, community events meant that the intercept uh, surveys were actually completed at adult migrant English program classes at Curtin University and Central Tech by both myself and some uh, useful students. Uh, participants were given the option to complete it, the survey on either paper or electronically via iPad and that we had some additional surveys from the Women's Health and Family Services sent to us. The web-based uh, emails were sent out to community groups and through organisation networks. A printed flyer was widely disseminated at uh, English classes and other uh, businesses. And it was also sent out through social media. So there you can see uh, this was actually posted on Thai Group and uh, a lovely individual uh, on her own accord wrote it in Thai. So for the survey, we had 284 actually start the survey, of which 251 uh, completed it. Of those, 209 were eligible. Uh, ineligibility was due to being born outside the two regions, uh, being in Australia longer than 10 years, uh, not providing data or providing incorrect data uh, around the eligibility questions. So for our people who completed it. Uh, most of them were from Southeast Asia. Most of the surveys were completed online and that was due to difficulty accessing uh, appropriate venues to conduct the intercept surveys. And most were female. Uh, we had quite a, a recent uh, group within the last two years and this was due to the, the survey being two years originally. Most were t on temporary visas and uh, of those who were on uh, temporary visas, quite a number of them had actually been in Australia for eight years or more. So most of our participants had a bachelor degree or higher, so were highly educated, and most of them were quite young. So these are our results. So you might have seen this. This was a little infographic that went back out through to uh, the networks we used to recruit participants. So this went back out to community. Uh, we had quite a high uh, knowledge um, around transmission. 73% uh, correctly believe that condoms used during sex could help protect people from getting HIV. 
Uh, equally, 79% incorrectly believed a person could get HIV from mosquitoes. So when we look over at the health service uh, usage, um, one of the big barriers that stopped people from going accessing health services was around cost. Um, the other one was around difficulty getting an appointment or finding the time to access health services. If we look at testing for HIV, um, 93% of people thought testing was important, but only 34% had actually ever tested for HIV in their life. Uh, the main reason for this was their perception of risk. So 56% didn't believe that they had done anything that would put them at risk of HIV. So the strength of this project was it brought together a number of organisations who work in health promotion programs, service delivery and policy, and provided an opportunity to build awareness of this issue. Uh, it showed that people from these two regions are willing to be engaged in research on sexual health and HIV. Uh, it used multiple recruitment methods to give us a, a broader reach of participants and demonstrated that online recruitment is a feasible method of working with these communities. Uh, and it also, although I didn't show it here, demonstrated that the survey tool was a, a reliable tool. The limitations, of course, it was only delivered in English. And the large differences in recruitment through online and face-to-face -face and between the two regions meant that I couldn't actually uh, test for any differences, which is challenging when that's your honours project. <laughs> <laughs> So lessons learned. So the challenges in involving these communities in research uh, really highlight the need for communities to be more involved in all aspects of HIV prevention, policy, service delivery and programs. And we're, we're really good at doing that with people living with HIV and gay men, but uh, perhaps we need to look at more sustainable ways of involving communities uh, and migrant communities. So where to? Uh, the team at SIREN are currently submitting an application to the Australian Research Council linkage scheme. Uh, so this will be a national survey uh, with some party um, jurisdictions that will give us um, some more consolidated data. And we'll also look at more feasible methods of recruitment. Uh, this year we'll be conducting community inquiry with uh, people from Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan African uh, community members to further explore the barriers and facilitators for HIV testing, and which also includes access to health services. And this builds on previous work that was done at, at Curtin uh, 2015. Uh, and we're also looking at conducting interviews with health professionals on their experiences uh, referring patients from these two regions to HIV testing. So at the moment, um, I've just sent out some invites to be part of the project advisory group, but if anyone's interested in these projects and would like to be involved, especially some of the um, health professionals here today, it would be great if you could get in touch because I need all the help I can get. Uh, so I'd like to acknowledge my supervisors, uh, Rowena, Gemma and Alison Reed, uh, the advisory group and for all their, their assistance throughout the project, the Sexual Health and Bloodborne Virus Program for supporting me during this project with the scholarship. Uh, and this project, uh, so many people took the time to, to meet with me and sit down and talk. Um, and lastly, all those people who, who took the time to complete the survey. Yeah.